Okay, having uh, looked at some examples of the tools, and particularly, admittedly, the technical tools uh, that we use in access control, uh, a bit more, but uh, turning to the concept of audit. Now, we've, we've dealt with audit in security management, in at least conceptual terms. And remember all of that. It is important uh, to have uh, audits. This is our assurance requirement very often for our uh, different types of, of tools and particularly in regard to access control. Uh, what are the audit reports? What are the audit logs? What are the system logs? What are the network logs say about who is accessing what? And is this uh, appropriate to uh, our intent for the systems in, in terms of the enterprise and our uh, uh, our risk, um, our needs, uh, our requirements for uh, confidentiality, availability, so on, as, as it goes. All, all of that, of course, as I say, discussed in conceptual terms when uh, we were dealing with security management. And now, uh, turning more specifically to the tools and as mentioned you know all the all the audit logs the system logs the network logs the uh, you know all the logging that is being done and all the the bundling and and reporting of what goes on with those logs which are very often these days not um, looked at individually but through the lens of security incident management, security event management, security incident and event management, however you want to spell that particular acronym, but tons and tons of tools nowadays that pick up all of the different logs that we have and then report to you. And of course, um, that provides us with a layer of abstraction that uh, gives us reports, but in doing so, it reduces the detail of what is being presented to us. And, and so every once in a while, it is a good idea to go through, check your settings, um, look at the actual logs themselves and see, are we missing anything? Is there anything because we have set our thresholds too high or not informed the system of things that we should be paying attention to? Uh, that indications of incidents or events or you know, whatever untoward happenings are happening uh, are not being reported to us. We need to uh, deal with that. You know, um, sure, the uh, the tools, the the reporting tools, the uh, management tools that that we use very often these days do give us violation reports. But are these violation reports complete? Um, and again, as with our discussion earlier in, in security management, in terms of the metrics, are the violation reports uh, reporting to us uh, just numbers or are they reporting to us actual actionable and important and relevant details of what are going on on our systems. So, um, we cannot simply say, oh, we've, you know, we've got an incident management uh, system reporting to us. We have to be tuning that, maintaining it, uh, making sure that it does tell us what we need it to tell us. And as... As I say, you know, this this is our assurance requirement in in this particular area. So make sure that it is doing what it is supposed to be doing and that we are getting out of it what we need out of it. Um, so we have those reports. 
uh, from the logs, uh, uh, either the details of the, the individual logs or the reports from the, the tools. Um, but we also have, uh, and particularly in our networked environment these days, um, intrusion detection systems. Now, intrusion detection systems are alarms. And as alarms, um, all, all alarms, and, and we'll get into this as we get into various systems, uh, even as diverse as uh, closed circuit TV uh, and certainly fire alarm systems, all alarm systems have three components. There is the sensor, there is the uh, command or communication uh, component of the system, and there is the actuator. Uh, so, uh, in um, intrusion detection systems, we have the, the actuator, that's the, the reports that we get on the system. Um, we have the uh, command and communication system. There's a lot of uh, potential different types of software um, in terms of managing those reports that... Um, aspect of uh, the intrusion detection and, and uh, dealing with it, collecting, uh, reporting, all, all to be a part of uh, those uh, systems. But there is a difference when we come to the sensors. Um, the the alerts, the, the messages that we get, and, and of course, you know, these messages can be relayed to us in a variety of ways. These days, you can get it by email, you can get it by text, you can get it on your console terminal, you, you know. Um, there are all kinds of uh, reports. Uh, in some cases, you can even get them to phone you. But, but where are the constraints in the system? Where are the, um, the thresholds? set so that we understand that and in particular our types of intrusion detection systems are divided up according to where the sensors are placed and on the one hand we have network based intrusion detection systems uh nids and and that is um the the sensors are on the network. They are looking at the network traffic. So we're going to see all the network traffic uh, that, or, you know, depending on how we've set the thresholds for reporting. But yeah, uh, it's, it's seeing all of the traffic uh, that is going on on the network. Now, of course, an awful lot of that traffic is not dangerous. And so we're doing an awful lot of reduction. But we also have the other type HIDs, uh, which is the host-based intrusion detection systems. And these are looking, they, they don't see all the traffic. They don't see everything uh, that happens on the network. But they do see what effect it has on the host. And so this is giving us more, well, sorry, less information about uh, actual attack packets, but more information about what those attack packets actually do effectively on our systems. So, uh, we have our host based, we have our network based, the two major different kinds of intrusion detection systems. And uh, we'll talk more about intrusion detection systems in the next clip.